Hi everyone, this is Hetty. Hetty is dead. It's working fine yesterday. I went to use Hetty today and all I'm getting is the power light. That's fluctuating on the camera because it's powered by the mains, but it's not actually fluctuating in real life. Um, so you may not be able to tell that's not necessarily a, a symptom. But yeah, obviously we're getting power into the main unit and no motor. Very sad because Hetty has been in the family for about 15 years and has served us very, very well. Still smiling, but dead. So we're going to see if we can fix her. Okay, so with the main motor unit off, there are two stages that we need to dismantle this in. Uh, stage one is to take out these four screws around the outside. Um, all of them are posi drive screws, so you want a kind of a long, narrow posi drive screwdriver for that, ideally to get the most grip. So remove those four screws first. So with the screws removed, the lid is now loose, so make sure when you when you turn it over, grip it by the underside of the lid, which is the top side, but you know, it's underside right now. Turn that over so you can lift it off. So this comes apart in two pieces now. First, the top comes off quite easily, and then the cable reel also comes out. Uh, and we can see here, and this could be a point of failure for some people, not in this case. So the power comes in from the cable to these two contacts and then the power is transferred to the inner ring and the outer ring here. And as you can see, that's quite well greased. And we know that there's no problem with power getting from these contacts to here because the light's coming on on the switch. So that's not a problem for me, but it could be that something is broken here or that the grease has dried and it's rubbing. So you might want to check that first. What we're going to do now is flip it over and remove the central three screws. So with those three screws out of the underside, the top now lifts off nice and smoothly and you've got two cables there connecting the rings to the switch and then you've got cables coming from the switch to the motor and there's also a PCB there as well. So if you lay the lid to one side you've got these spade terminals which just pop off the motor on each side and then we can place that to one side and we can get to the switch by popping out these clips on either side so at this point it's either the PCB or the switch both can be replaced fairly easily but you don't want to order one and it turns out that it wasn't the problem so we're going to do some testing to find out exactly, uh, well, we can eliminate the switches and if both of those work fine, then we know it must be the PCB because that's the only other thing left. So let's do that first. So the green switch is quite simple. As you can see, it just provides a connection between these two brown wires and between the two blue wires at the back. So we can test that quite easily just by and then uh, we're set to continuity mode. I'm just going to turn on the switch. That's good. That's a clean connection. So we could do the same with the blue wires and make sure that um, it's working for those as well. Okay. I'm suspicious of this switch. Uh, because it's not doing what it should do. You've got two contacts here, which are both connected to each other. And then you've got one over here. These two in the middle are connected to each other. And that's fine. We can ignore that. So what we should see is 
there should be continuity between these two terminals when the switch is placed into the momentary position. Okay, so the terminals are connected and we're on beep mode for continuity and we're getting nothing. So there are two things we could do at this point. Um, in the meantime, because obviously we could order a replacement of this, but we could also bypass this switch completely and just have the uh, terminals connected so it goes straight through. Otherwise, we could open up this switch and see if it's repairable. So what I've done temporarily is connect the two terminals to the center connections of the switch, which are connected together. And that will bypass the switch completely. And then we're gonna test it and see if that works. So with the motor back together temporarily, I was still measuring only 30 volts to the motor and the motor was not spinning at all. So therefore it must be this. So the easiest thing to do in this situation where either the switch, uh, the speed switch or the PCB has failed is to just bypass the both of them. So we've got mains power coming in to the switch in the middle here. And then all we're gonna do is connect the white wires or to the motor to this side of the switch instead. So instead of power coming out of here, powering this light and powering the PCB is just gonna be powering the motor. Um, that eliminates this switch, so you can just disconnect the switch and leave it in there if you want, or you could order a replacement uh, light that will go there, and the PCB can stay in there just disconnected because it plugs this gap and uh, then it's working the way it's designed to work, but without the extra electronics. And that saves about 10 to 20, maybe 30 pounds, depending on where you buy the parts from, because you will get places that charge you for a kit, which is actually just a standard switch from um, that you could get from any, any electronics reseller, um, but at a markup because it comes with instructions specifically for Henry or Hetty. So I'm gonna wire this up and show you how it looks. Step one is to remove the connections from the turbo switch. Uh, step two, disconnect the PCB. So you've got these four connections loose. And then remove the two end connections from the power switch. Once all that's done, then we can remove the, uh, the wires that aren't connected to anything. And also you want to disconnect this brown wire from the spade that the white wire is connected to. That will leave you with the two mo uh, motor wires and just connect those to either of those terminals. As you can see, they're both white, which means there's no polarity, which means it doesn't matter which order you connect them in. So just uh, tidy up the wires, tuck them in a bit, um, add the switches back in and then you won't have a gap and then we can test it. One thing to note is that you shouldn't test the motor until you've uh, put it back into the main unit uh, because you will get a twisting force which will ruin whatever surface you are resting on um, and it's not very safe. There is one slightly awkward part to putting this back together again which is that in the lid here, there are, um, there's a gap for the top of the motor to fit. That stops it from spinning internally. You just have to make sure that this is angled just right so that it goes in there. Otherwise, the lid won't fit flush and you won't be able to put it back together properly. So if you've got that right, then this should sit flush with the rest of the unit. Also make sure that the motor wires are tucked into those little gaps there because this unit should be sealed to a point. Um, and if those are sticking out, then again, you won't get a flush fit. It doesn't make a huge difference, but just for neatness, 
um, you can pop the PCB back in and then that fills the gap um, that would otherwise be there. So if you've done it right, it should be flush all the way around and you won't be able to push down any more on either side of it. Um, if you've got a gap here, it means that maybe there's a wire in the way and um, any gaps around here means that it's not orientated correctly inside. It's a little bit fiddly, but don't proceed. Don't put any screws in if it's not completely flush all the way around. And then when you're sure that you've got that right, at this point, it's just reversing the process that we did to take it apart, starting with the three screws to hold the motor cover on. Once the screws for the motor cover are in, uh, you can pop the mains reel in and make sure that the cable is coming through this gap. And also don't forget the, this bit, because that will clip into the lid when we pop that on. There you go. Just pop it in sideways and then this plastic tab at the bottom fills in the gap. So once those final four screws are in the underside of the motor unit, then um, I've put Hetty back together again, given her a fresh new bag and... Happy days. And it didn't cost me a thing. Thanks for watching.